Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. If this is your first time here, just welcome. I'm glad you were here. I'm also glad to be here. What we've got today is a 2004 Chevrolet Silver Eraido 1500. Looks like it's a two wheel drive with a 5.3 liter V8 and a 4L60 transmission. We have approximately 51,470 miles on the odometer. And the customer states that the thing misfires and shakes sometimes. And it also has a check engine light. Now, you guys can't feel it, but I can feel it. That misfire is very real. I feel it uh, rhythmically presenting itself every now and then. So let us pull up the data and trouble codes in the scanning device. And uh, we're gonna see which cylinder is affected and uh, go from there. Yep, looks like we got the 5.3 LM7, rear wheel drive. Okay, we're going into engine, trouble codes, codes menu, there we go. We would like to display these trouble codes, all of them. And, oh, okay, EVAP system large leak, P0455 and a P0300 engine misfire detected. It has not told us which cylinder is misfiring. So let's see if we cannot identify the misfiring cylinder. Let's go into data and misfire data. It may give us a misfire, it may not, but let's find out. Hmm, I see one on number seven. One showed up on number two. Okay, I felt it just now when it gave me a count on number seven. Let's see if it has history counts. Whoa, quite a few. But it looks like number seven is our primary offender, uh, followed up with a secondary offender on cylinder number two. So real quick, I wanna look into this EVAP system leak. Uh, the EVAP system basically purges gasoline vapors from the tank as the fuel level is displaced with air. Um, normally what I would want to do is just take a look straight after the uh, the purge solenoid on the engine. That's the solenoid that opens that actually uses engine vacuum to uh, draw those gasoline vapors out of the tank and into the engine's intake stream in order to burn them. Now normally I just like to go straight to the source, disconnect the line, uh, unplug the connector so that the purge solenoid is turned off and then check for a vacuum uh, at the uh, output side of the uh, purge solenoid. Um, that's a, It's an effective way of doing it, but I wanna do this the Eric O from South Main Auto Channel way. And I'm going to look at the fuel tank pressure sensor to see if I have a negative pressure built up in the back. Purge pressure, okay, we do have a positive pressure in the tank. Uh, that is going to lead me to believe that it is in fact not the purge solenoid. Everything here is looking good. But you know what? I'm going to do it the old school analog way and just manually check it anyway, just in case. Powering down. This is super easy to do, especially on these old GMs. There's our solenoid. That's the line running back to the fuel tank. Uh, become disconnected now, please. Looks like that's gonna be a two-handed operation. Okay. And we're gonna disconnect it electronically just to verify that it is indeed off. We'll start the engine and check for a vacuum right here. That's a negatory, no vacuum. So we have confirmed using two different methods. Ah. Well, we confirmed using two methods that this thing is not leaking. However, I also do not hear it purging. Let's try to command it just in case it's being commanded off right now. So back to the scan tool with us. Uh, we're gonna go into special functions or functional tests. Evap purge and seal. So we're gonna command this to purge. We're gonna command it wide open throttle on the purge. Oh, I heard it. Go check it, make sure it's working. Yes, it is. Oop, I killed it. Uh, that it did that. Okay, we are again purging, purging, purging. We do have some fuel tank negative pressure. I wonder if the vent is stuck. So we turn it off. We're 
back to a positive pressure. Yes, it's not venting. Now we should have a positive pressure. Fuel tank pressure, yes, we still have a positive pressure. I wonder if we have a vent solenoid issue. Let's go down there and check the vent solenoid next. Also, it appears that someone has already replaced this fuel cap trying to sort out this uh, EVAP system leak code that it has. We'll just stick that back in there. It should clip on right here, but that part was never completed. All right, we're uh, rolling down under here to check the condition of this vent solenoid. I do have the car jacked up some. Yes, there is a jack stand in place. Okay, what we're looking at here is the, the vent solenoid for the EVAP system. What I'm gonna do is command this thing open and closed. And we're gonna make sure we've got power and ground at the connector. Uh, then we're gonna listen for an audible indicator from the solenoid itself to make sure it is opening and closing. If it is opening and closing and we hear that audible click of the solenoid itself, we'll have to move on to see if something else is going on with the system. Okay, so in an effort to make this a little bit easier on myself, I've gone ahead and removed this solenoid. Uh, really easy to get out. Um, one connector, one sliding clip, and then one hose clamp. Uh, what I'm going to do is, utilizing a power 12 volt power supply, I'm going to manually power and ground this solenoid with my annoying and beeping jump box. And we're gonna listen for that audible click. On the negative pin, on the positive pin, and we do not get an audible click. If you look close, you can see the spark where it's making contact, but the solenoid is not opening and closing. So we have confirmed that this vent solenoid is faulty and should be replaced. However, I'm not quite done because I still want to verify the circuit and make sure that that circuit is functioning like it should be. Oh, there it is. When I had it connected to the meter, and commanded off, I was still getting uh, 12 volts here. Um, now the way that this circuit works is it's always going to be powered from uh, from the fuse box and then the negative side runs straight to the ECM. Uh, the ECM closes ground when it wants to command the solenoid to open or close. It opens or closes ground and uh, that is how the circuit is controlled. Um, while I was commanding it open and close with the meter attached, I still had 12 volts here and uh, that 12 volt signal would never go away. So I'm suspecting that the contact in the ECM is stuck in the closed position and is always supplying ground to that solenoid. Always supplying ground to that solenoid. If that is the case, then that could be why the solenoid has failed. So let's probe this one more time and command it one more time and see if we can uh, watch that circuit change status or not. Okay, we see here that the pins are connected. Following the leads, leads are connected to the meter. We've got battery voltage here. Uh, we are key on. And I'm gonna command this solenoid to the off position. Off. Confirms that it's off, but look, we still have 12 volts here. So the ECM is not responding to commands from the scan tool. So it's constantly grounding the control circuit for that solenoid. Okay, let's put this on continuity to ground. Uh, we can see that that circuit is grounded. We do have 1.976 mega ohms of resistance. And what I'm going to do is try to command it off. Okay, let's turn off the beeper, that's annoying. I'm going to command it off and on again. Um, we should see this circuit go open when it's commanded off. And we do not. So we could have a faulty ECM or there could be short to ground on that circuit. Uh, what I want to do now is disconnect the ECM harness and then if this circuit goes to open circuit then we know that there's not a short to ground in the circuit then we can then determine that the ECM is faulty. All right let's go ahead and disconnect this battery real quick like. So everything is powered down. And ECM is right here under these covers, so this should be a fairly quick diagnosis. 
I'm basically going to remove both of the connectors for it and then recheck that control circuit for a grounded signal. If it is grounded, then we know it's the circuit. If it is not grounded, then we know that the ECM is maintaining ground and uh, that's where the fault lies. So there's just two connectors. They're very large connectors, but there's still only two. One unbolted and uh, number two, there it is. Okay, that connection is broken. That connection is broken. Let's go back to the meter and see if we still have ground on that circuit. All right, again, we're verifying connection. There's the control circuit. There's the one of the meter leads connected to ground and we do not have continuity to ground in this circuit. Therefore, I conclude that the ECM is faulty and should be replaced. This vehicle needs an ECM and a vent control solenoid. So, moving on to the next day, I have a replacement vent solenoid here, so I can show you the sound that these make when they're actuated. So I'm gonna fire up my beeping 12 volt supply. Check this out. Now, like you saw earlier, there's no actuation feedback. But then we put it on this one, beep. Listen here. Confirmed. So I've also got a new ECM here, part number 19299226. Uh, I don't know why they list AC Delco and GM part numbers because they're always identical, but um, GM does that. I don't know. Either way, here's our new module. Now, I can't program this yet. We have to make an appointment with the programming people and their excellent customer service representatives. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and set this in position in the truck and uh, get it prepared for programming. That way, when our appointment time rolls around, uh, we can install the operating system on this and then I will go and prove out the circuit. Actually, I'm gonna try to prove that circuit out first before programming. Um, it may function, it may not, but we will see. Come out. Mm, I know. Miniature angular pry bar. There we go. All right, that goes aside. Take the new one. Set that down into position right here. Uh, when our appointment rolls around for the programming people, they're gonna pull the programming software, operating software out of this module, store it on the interwebs, and then I will connect this mod, these connectors to this new module, and then they will wirelessly reinstall that same program into this unit right here. That's the plan. Okay, so immediately after making that last statement, uh, I decided to go ahead and deviate from the plan and uh, connect that new ECM. Uh, although it's not programmed and I will have to connect it again, I wanted to just go ahead and prove this circuit out. So just like earlier, I have the meter connected to the ground side of the control circuit for the solenoid, and I have it uh, also connected to ground through its negative lead. So what I'm going to do is just command this solenoid on and off. Uh, this is set to continuity with the alarm, and it's going to chime when ground is connected and broken. So there's on. We're grounded and off. So although that ECM doesn't have an operating software installed, it's still able to uh, perform its basic functions when commanded by the scan tool. So now we have proved out that both the uh, EVAP solenoid, the event control solenoid, and the ECM are both faulty. Uh, I speculate that the ECM failed first and continued to energize that solenoid until the solenoid burnt up and then that failed. Uh, either way, we have proved out both failures of the system and now it's a waiting game until the appointment for a program. Okie dokes, my scheduled appointment time for this Silvery Rado to have the module programmed is ready to go. Uh, this particular programmer has a 12-volt uh, outlet to keep the battery fully charged and to provide consistent voltage. Uh, keys on, it's charging. As for all the directions, I'm just waiting for them to call me. Okay, rebooting the machine. I've got them on the phone. They're on silence, so they don't know that we're here. Next and next. Let me pause this while I log in. Be right back. All right, what did 
you get the replacement? Uh, the replacement was a uh, AC Delco uh, GM part from the dealership. How many keys do you have? Um, ooh. I think I only have the one. Yeah, we only have... We require two. We won't know that until we're actually in there. Okay. If it does, you will have to get another one. And we'll program it under this warranty. I understand. Okay. Yeah, I've got uh, jump cables connected. Go ahead and sign for the service, and I'll go ahead and get started once it's done. You got it. Okay, it's, uh, let's see, it's pulling up the VIN, year, make, and model, ECM, it's confirming, signing, like that. Okay. Alright, uh, just to verify, what's the last four of the VIN from the dash? Last four of the VIN from the dash, hang on, let me walk over there, uh, 6416. We have to go back. Uh -oh. um, this car is pulling a bit. Please have a car pose of it or an engine. Car automatically pull a bit. We have it classified as used. If it was brand new, it wouldn't have a van in it. Hmm. No, no, I have the old module connected right now. Oh, you do still have Yeah, I still have the old one connected. In the old, the van from the dashboard, or did you give me a van from the I gave you the VIN off of the uh, placard on the dash. And it's the last word, repeat it one more time for me. That's 6416. Okay, yeah. It's coming up different. Interesting. Has the placard been, been replaced at all? I don't think so. Now, let me, uh, let's look at yeah. the, on the door sill and uh, see if that's the same, same one here. Yeah, I have 6416 on the door as well. And you have the old part in there? Yes. For sure. Absolutely. Okay, I'll go ahead and just check it a little bit more. Okay. I'm wondering if this ECM has been replaced with a, like a salvage yard unit or something like that. Oh, you got me. Yeah, right. I started sweating. Let me go ahead and get Me too. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish up. Thank you so much. Oh, no worries. I, I appreciate the laugh. It's been a, been a rough day. Right, right. All right, I'll call you shortly. Okay, thanks. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Man, so I'm, I'm waiting around and waiting around. It's been, uh, what, six o'clock now. I don't remember what time it was when I got off the phone with her. But uh, I think I got stood up. She's uh, she's not calling me back, guys. My heart's broken. Yeah, I got off the phone with them at about 5.30. 5.26, 5.30, something like that. It's uh, 6.02 now, and uh, the lights just went off. I'm still here. I think we got stood up. Might have to try this again in the morning. Well, it looks like this will be continued till tomorrow. Uh, you guys won't notice. That was loud. The transition will be seamless from your point of view. Okay, it's noonish or something the next day. Uh, I've already made another call with these folks right here and they have gone back to the programming sequence for the CCM. So they're pulling the old stuff out right now. When they call me back, I'll switch the modules back over. I know I've said this 10 times, but I switch them back over. They install the new program and then we are good to go. Okay, we are gonna change gears uh, one more time here. There, uh, there's an issue going on with this vent solenoid. See, uh, this is no longer available with um, 
this hose attached to it. Uh, apparently GM issued a bulletin on that where you have to get this solenoid, cut this hose off, and then figure out how to hook up uh, this hose to this connector right here. And uh, that is the fix for when you need to replace this fan control unit. So I'm just gonna chop this off and uh, butt them up and connect them with a piece of uh, rubber hose, I suppose. That's uh, actually the bulletin on the matter. Let's see if a serrated knife will do it. I think it will. Yeah, it's just gonna chop right through it. That's good. Highly sophisticated. I didn't want to use a uh, like a cutting tool because it may smash and crimp this, which would probably cause it to leak, which would then cause a trouble code, which would then make me have to do it twice. Things pretty dirty in there. Time to spray. Break clean for, well, that's not break clean, that's paint. Don't use that. This one. Good. Multi purposing, keeping the floor clean at the same time. Okay, I have a length of 5 8 heater hose here, and I think that will be sufficient. So what I'll do is put some lube on this, a little bit inside of the tube, and we'll just slip it on there as far as I can get it. Yep, it's getting super tight now. Okay, that's all she wrote. I've got a little over an inch there. That should be sufficient. And uh, on this side, I'll just chop it off and shove it on. Right there is good. Mm, that cuts horrendous. I don't like it. Trying again. Yeah, that's not horrendous. Better. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's that. Technical service bulletin procedure complete. The real question is, is, is this too long or too short? So I'll bring my cutters with me in case it's too long. And I'll make efficient use of my time by plugging this guy back in and reconnecting it while I'm waiting for uh, the uh, programmer guys to call me back. So this little dude goes right up here on its bracket. Where's that bracket? Uh, I lost it. Oh, there it is, right above us. So what I'm gonna do, slide this guy on. Hope you can see. I can't see. Okay, that goes right there. And then the hose end clips on right over there. We're good. And I've just got to feed my wire back through the top of the frame and uh, connect that over here on the back side. There. Okay, units installed. Let's get out of here. Ugh. So we're just waiting on the programmer guys next. I'll check back in with you guys when they call me back. Okay, I understand. Uh, give me just a couple seconds real quick and I've got this uh, almost disconnected here. connections. Bear with me, buddy. I'm talking to the guy on the phone, not, not you guys. I mean, I'm talking to you guys, too. All right, old module out. New module in. Okay. 
Okay, we are still keyed off. I'm plugging in your module now. And we're keyed back on. Let's uh let's try it again. Okay, can we go ahead now? Stand here. Okay. Do you want me to stay on the line or do you wanna just call me back? Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah, I am all I'm all good, so I would just need to uh I'll just plug up plug this uh this new or the VIN back in. because uh, I was just checking to see if it was actually reading it as blank and it does. Perfect. Uh, and we should be all set. I will go ahead and uh, get started, okay? Very good, thank you sir, appreciate it. You're welcome. Yep. Bye. Okay, bye. Alright, we're keyed off. Plug the OB2. Okay, disconnected. Yep. Okay, and then keep the vehicle back on. Okay, we're keyed back on, engine off. Hey, you want me to start it? Yep, go ahead and start it now. Oh, okay. And it is alive. I think we're good to go. And the only thing that should be on would be the check engine light? Yes, yeah. Let me uh, plug my scanner back in and see what that that'll, trouble code that'll says. The, uh, yeah, that'll be the crankshaft variation line. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, so that would have to be done. Uh, and other than that, could you check your gears for good engagement? I can, yeah. Um, I do have a, uh, a U code in here. It's a U0107. It says lost column with the throttle actuator. I'll try to clear um, it and see what it does. Yeah, I would, say, I would, yeah, I would try to clear code to see if... Uh, if that goes away. Okay, I I do have uh, gear actuation. The trans is functioning. Okay. So let me go ahead and clear these out. We'll make sure that okay, U code the, stays the away. The only one that should stay would be that. Uh, that yeah, the crank variation. Crank yep. And I can I can relearn that in a moment. Okay. Yeah, yep. Yeah. The uh, U code is gone. I've just got the P0315 uh, crank variation okay. relearned, so uh, we're good to go. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and close out your kit here for you. Um, and if you have any issues, go ahead and give us a call back. Other than that, you have a good day, sir. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Okay. So the cam crank relearn. Uh, basically, that is a procedure where I bring this engine to operating temp and uh, initiate the uh, relearn procedure. I will actuate the throttle to wide open throttle. The engine will race to red line. Uh, the moment it reaches red line, it will initiate a fuel cutoff. And at that moment, it has uh, relearned the relationship between the crankshaft and the camshaft. Okay, time for the scary part. We're gonna go ahead and initiate the cam crank relearning procedure. We are headed into functional tests, crankshaft variation learn. Begin, set parking brake. Yes, lost drive wheels, yes. Cycle ignition from off to on, yes. Radio off, applying to hold the brake pedal. Start engine, reach operating temperature, AC off, check, check, check. Brake pedal being held, continue, and accelerate to wide open throttle, 4,000 to 5,000 RPMs, here we go. And that was it. It did a fuel cut off at about 3,800. Check engine lights off. Test complete. Reload uh, CKP variation learn successful. My work is done here. Powering down. Pew. Actually, I got ahead of myself. If you recall earlier, at the very, very, very beginning of working on this car, there was a misfire that showed up sometimes. And uh, I want to monitor that now since the ECM has been replaced. So let's head over into misfire data. I bet you it doesn't have one anymore. Ah, radio. Okay, yep, I'm not seeing any misfires at all. Uh, none in history. Now this is a new ECM, so there shouldn't be any history. Uh, again, I'm gonna pause, walk away, come back later, and we're just gonna watch these counts and make sure no misfires have showed up. Alrighty then, everybody. I am done servicing this particular silvery radio. Backing out the auto for parkage action. 
all systems are functioning as designed the misfire is gone as always i'd like to thank all of you guys for watching my video and i want to let you know that i very much appreciate you being here all the way until the end seeing as how you made it all the way to the end i'm going to assume that you like this video if you did like this video please feel free to communicate that to me effectively and to youtube by happy tapping that thumbs up button down below that like button down below is what lets both YouTube and myself know that I've done a good job here. And if YouTube thinks that I've done a good job here, it is far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. That's good for me, and that's also good for the other viewers. So again, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, before I go, I have to remind you guys to not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Parking the auto, powering down. Pew. End of transmission.